Hey everybody, it's the boss lady here coming to you from my office. Um, in the process of ooh, reading through some things. Um, different type of video today. Uh wanted to do a sit-down video um in reference to uh something that's important and near and dear to my heart. Um I don't even know how to begin with this. So uh, let's start with this piece first. Okay. And then we will segue. So you all know that Miss Pina is a Girl Scout. I have told you guys that she has been a Girl Scout since she was in kindergarten. So she started off as a Daisy. So she was a Daisy for two years, Brownie for two years, Junior for two years. Then she went to be a cadet. I believe cadet was all of middle school. And then now she has bridged on to be a senior, uh, which will be for two years. And then she goes into ambassador and then she basically graduates. So she's been in Girl Scouts for 10 years. Um, you all know that she switched troops. Um what was that, fifth grade? I think when we switched schools, we switched troops. And so, um, you know, she went from one troop where I was totally hands-on to the second troop where I didn't really have to do anything. I was still a volunteer, but I really didn't have to do anything outside of transportation. So, um, it was when we first joined, it was like a troop of seven girls, three troop leaders. So, you know, they had more than enough hands on deck well over the few years here um two of the troop leaders decided to go away and the reason why we joined this particular troop is because uh we had friends in that troop um one of the troop leaders was a friend of mine as well as her daughter was a friend of my daughter's so fast forward to um pandemic uh <laughs> so during the pandemic of course you know when everything had closed down um that included in-person troop meetings in-person um service unit meetings in-person um camps and things of that nature so our troop had to move to you know online as well as everybody else so they started doing like zoom meetings well those didn't go over well i mean they were like really mm, for lack of better terms, horrendous. Um, there was no order and it was just, it was annoying at best. And you know, with kids already doing online learning, my daughter just really wasn't into doing the Zooms and the Zooms were always late. They never started on time, things of that nature. So we were more than happy when everything could start being back in person. Um, so let's fast forward to this year, ninth grade year. Um, bridging over to become a senior. So I do believe I showed you guys um, bits and clips of the bridging and her becoming a senior um, in Girl Scouts and everything was, you know, what it was. So um, the friend that she knew in the troop, um, she, for lack of better terms, is a little bossy. She likes to over talk everybody. Um, including her mother. <laughs> um, she also, she kind of gives like, you know, passive aggressive jabs at people. So, you know, two of the girls she goes to school with. And then of course my daughter, she does not. And, um, you know, just kind of weird humor. And so it was becoming annoying to me, but you know, I was just making the best of it. Well, with now only her mother being the troop leader, you know, it's like you really can't say much because, you know, her mom is a troop leader. Well, it just kind of got a little annoying. So roughly about November-ish, so this was after bridging, um, they had a meeting and I'm going to show you. They were working on a journey called Mission Sisterhood. So this is the journey that uh, Miss Pina is working on. Um, she just has a couple, two, three things left to do. And then she earns her journey award. Okay. So, um, yeah, so she got this. And <clears throat> one of the meetings, which I believe was in November, um, they were talking about friendships. And, um, and you're going to understand more once I get towards the end of this video. Excuse me. 
But in the meeting, that particular meeting, there was a lot of questions in reference to friendships and what type of friend do you, um, what type of friend do you want to have? What type of friend are you? Um, do you have any standards or morals or, you know, things of that nature when it comes to friends? And so each girl was asked if we have four girls in the troop. And once the questions got to my daughter, um, the answers that were given were not uh, accepted. And so as opposed to continuing on with the meeting, um, my daughter began to be mm, almost interrogated. Like, well, what do you mean by this? And what do you mean by that? And, and no, that just can't be right. That just can't be true. And, and then, um, you know, my daughter started getting uncomfortable. She got very uncomfortable to the point where I had to interject and, uh, you know, <laughs> say my piece, like, let's move on. You know what I mean? Um, my daughter was very uncomfortable after the meeting. She spoke about being uncomfortable. Um, there were some other conversations that were had in reference to school and things of that nature. So there was a lot of conversations going on like November. Um, well, actually we've been having conversations since September, really once school has started back in person. So, you know, but by the time October and November came, um, once she got to that troop meeting and had those questions, it really rocked the boat. So, uh, fast forward to December when, um, the day of my accident, um, you know, I had a meeting at the school in reference to a few things and, um, you know, uh, it was just a lot of things that were discussed. And so, um, Miss Pennant also had went to the doctor that day. So, you know, there was a lot of things I just, I discussed with the school as well as her doctor and what tipped me to even question things at the school, question things with her doctor was the reaction from this troop meeting. So, um, fast forward to this past week, um, before I get to what I really want to talk about, I want to finish up with the Girl Scout piece. So we had, well, there was a troop meeting in January that we did not attend because I was, you know, injured and um, unable to drive to the location. So, you know, I said, we're going to miss January, but we'll, you know, hit it strong in February. So <clears throat> February comes this past week. We had the meeting on Wednesday and whatever was discussed in January was not discussed verbatim in the February meeting. Um, you could tell in the meeting that there was like some kind of standoffish type of behavior. And prior to the meeting that same day, I had advised the, the leader that I wasn't for sure if my daughter would be selling cookies. And the reason why is because she had expressed to me she didn't think she wanted to do it. She said it's more for the younger girls and, you know, she's kind of over it. She doesn't really want to deal. And especially with me, you know, having this, you know, fear of driving and things of that nature, um, you know, she just really didn't want to put me out there. So I, I get it. You know, she's thinking of her mom. She's thinking of herself. She's just, you know, she's over it. So anyway, she didn't express those things to her troop leader, but she expressed them to me, which I am a volunteer of the troop. So that's fine. Um, So I expressed to the troop leader that I don't think we're going to be selling cookies this year, but I do know we have a few orders. So we will get those orders. And I had encouraged my daughter to work the cookie booth. Well, with that being said, the troop leader wasn't happy with that. She wants all girls of the troop to sell cookies and basically told me if my daughter wasn't going to sell cookies, that she needed to find another fundraiser to assist the troop. Um, it would only be fair. Um, you know, she wants to be fair to all the girls and things of that nature. And I'm like, well, I talked to the council. The council said it's not mandatory. It's optional to do cookie sales and other fundraisers. So what are you talking about? Well, anyway, she basically, you know, kind of threw it back at me that she was going to call the council and, you know, and at that point I was, you know, I wasn't ready to discuss with her what I'm going to discuss with you, but, um, 
I felt like it was a push and pull situation and that we needed to sever ties before it got ugly, if you know what I mean. Because um, at this point in my life, I am not going to allow anyone to overstep to antagonize, to criticize, to bully, to force my child to do anything, not as long as God gives me bread. So I, you know, I contacted the council several times that day, which was Thursday. And finally, um, you know, I was on the website and I said, you know what, it would be best that we sever ties because to keep things from escalating to a point of no return, it's just best that we just sever ties. So I contacted the council and I got more information in reference to what does a Juliet mean. Um, so we do have within our council, and I believe across the world, where girls don't have to be a part of a troop to be a Girl Scout. You can be what's called a Juliet. And that just means you're a standalone Girl Scout. You're not part of a troop, but you are a Girl Scout. You're able to go to Girl Scout camps and service unit um, functions and council functions and things of that nature. So you're able to do everything that girls in a troop can do. You just don't answer to a troop. Um, you do have a, a Juliet mentor, which, you know, that would be myself. And um, you work on your uh, your journeys by, you know, by yourself. And, you know, and if there's any awards that you're trying to go after, you you know, you work at your pace, things of that nature. Cool, fine. So um, I gave Miss Peanut three options. I said, option one, you can find a new troop. Option two, you can become a Juliet. And I explained what her Juliet is. Or option three, you can quit. Because at this point, I was done. Uh, Miss Peanut wanted to quit initially until she knew that there, till she found out, I should say, that uh, she had an option to still be a Girl Scout and not have to deal with a troop or that troop. So she chose to be a Juliet. Um, so now mom, me, <laughs> hey, uh, I am her Juliet mentor or slash troop leader. And it is my duty, my job to guide her um, until graduation, basically. So, uh, today I picked up some items. One of them being the, is that right side? The guidebook. So this guidebook, it talks about everything. It talks about badges, talks about journeys, talks about cookies, talks about awards, um, all of that. So this will assist me, assist her, to, you know, move forward in her journey. She is just, she just became a senior um, Girl Scout this year. So, um, yeah, we will just continue on, finish up the journeys that she was working on and finish up well, that journey that she was working on. And then there was a badge she was working on and we're going to work on a couple other badges, um, have our own troop meeting um, and move forward from there. I also picked up, let me see here if I can pull this out. So, like I said, she has become a Juliet. So, this will now be on her vest. So, it says Juliet's. Um, I also picked her. She's not done with her. Um, oh, gosh. Which one is this? Oh, okay. So, she is finishing up her journey. And so, this is the badge for the journey. Once she has completed, she will get this. Um, there is a... So this is a journey award, sorry. So she will, um, once she finishes the book, what we're going to do there, she'll get that award. Then she's also working on a badge, a car care badge. So, um, and I'm actually, I think I'm going to record that piece of it because I thought it was kind of cool what we're going to, what I'm planning to do, not what the troop is deciding to do, but what I'm planning to do for her to earn this badge. So I already picked up the badge. So she already has that because I wanted to make sure I had some things kind of already at the ready. And then, um, because it is cookie go day, as I am recording, um, I also picked this badge up for her. She'll get that later, um, in a few months here. And then, um, nationally, nationally, excuse me, national 
Girl Scout Cookie Weekend, so she earned that one here. And then it says Climb with Courage. And this actually, um, I really like this, but it says Climb with Courage Cookies 2022. And I got that. Now, I know you're probably thinking, didn't you just say she didn't want to sell cookies? No, she doesn't want to sell cookies. So she's not doing any, like, cookie booths. She's not um, going to any businesses. Uh, she is just fulfilling orders for friends and family who have in the past ordered from her and is wanting to support her. Um, so that is what we are doing with Girl Scouts going forward. So... Um, I have decided that, yes, I am taking on. At first, you know, for years, I was like, I don't want to be a troop leader. I don't want to be a troop leader. And I don't want a troop. But if it's to benefit my daughter and everything and, you know, in the stage of life that she's in right now, then, yes, I'm going to do what I need to do. So, um, so that'd be that. Uh, you know, as I sit here and look at this beautiful box, look at this. I mean, cookies. This is a the new cookie, y'all. This these cookies right here. These are called Adventurefuls. Let me tell you, these cookies. Miss Pina has helped me eat these cookies. Okay, so look how much is left. <laughs> this is how much is left. These cookies are so good, like O M G good. Um, and I got to be careful because I don't, you know, want to mess up my little healthy eating but anyway so that be that so and i'm bringing all of this up because I, I had to give you the back story before i can give you the forward or front story so okay so we're gonna rewind a little bit so remember i said you know we were dealing with some stuff you know since school has started um the conversation and you know what was it november or whatever it really struck some things you know, brought some things to the forefront where I was like, what? And then, you know, like I said, she went to the doctor. I had a meeting with the school. Um, this was all in December, the day of my accident. Um, so what ended up happening, um, Miss Peanut got a referral. And, um, whew. I'm still processing. I'm still processing. Lord have mercy, Jesus. <sighs> so, um, she got a referral. We had to go back to the doctor um, this month. We had actually three visits this month. Um, and then she has another referral and, you know, the school is working with us and whatever. And, um... This week, uh, this past Tuesday, so this was before the troop meeting. So so now you're going to understand why I got to the point of um, not wanting to deal with the troop leader and the girls in the troop and Miss Pina is now a Juliet as opposed to part of that troop. So this week on Tuesday, the day before the meeting, the day before the arguments <laughs> arguments or whatever um i had a appointment with the doctor that miss peanut was referred to and um it was told to me that um miss peanut is um special needs um we were advised and told that after the referral that was done and the evaluations and assessments that were completed, that Miss Peanut, um, I don't want to say like tested positive because that just seems like weird to say, but that it was discovered that she has autism spectrum disorder level one as well as um, generalized anxiety disorder. Um, so when we were having some things pop up when school started, um, she was not transitioning well with school. 
um, there were days where I would get text messages from her and she would be having a hard time. Um, like she would be in class and there was like disruptions and, you know, just um, the kids are different than her. Um, and what I thought different meant was that they are more from quote unquote the hood than she is. So I thought that was what the difference was or they were more public school and she's coming from private school. But um, it has been discovered that there's like a social piece that is um, not an issue, but different, indifferent. Um, so, um, so ASD level one is the same as Asperger. Um, and you can look all that information up. I'll try to put information in the description box, but um, she's very high functioning. So like, she's not special ed, meaning she needs help with her work. Miss Peanut has made the A honor roll and now the B honor roll. She slipped by just a couple, two, three points where it slipped her to B and took her out of A, but... So grade-wise, work-wise, she's right on point. Um, but there's the social piece um, that is what's going on. So when she was in that conversation and, you know, the leader kept prodding her and questioning her about friendships and friends and, and standards and things of that nature, it was very uncomfortable for her um, because basically when she gives an answer, you should accept her answer. That should be anybody. But the fact that she kept prodding her about friendships and friendship groups and, and things like that, that really just, it really bothered her because she is having an issue with making and having friends at school right now. Um, so I got that out. Whew, got it out. Uh, so, fast forward to, once again, this week, the meeting. Um, the girls in the troop were, they, three of them go to the same school. So, they run the same circles, things like that. Miss Pina is considered an outcast. And they made it very evident the other day. And Miss Pina was very saddened then nonchalant about it not caring just want to go and I was like you know what if you as a leader cannot see that you have one child who is withdrawn from the group and you can't reel them in that's a problem you're an ineffective leader um and so you know when we were arguing over something so frivolous as cookies i was like are you kidding me seriously what so anyway um the troop leader does not know about the asd level one diagnosis i didn't feel it was her business to know um mind you we've been friends associates since the girls were two one babies so um you know it, it's been it's been a rough week and while I am not trying to isolate my daughter um I am trying to um not appease her but basically just make her comfortable um you know we got a lot of things that we're working with a lot of things we're working on a lot of people that we're working with as opposed for the Oh gosh, I don't even know how to say it. We have a lot of people we were working with, a lot of things we we're working on to assist, is what I was trying to say, with the social piece and things of that nature. Um, so there are things in the works and, you know, things are working in our favor. But at the same time, in between time, with her being uncomfortable and really withdrawn, I could see it all over her face, even with the mask on. There's no sense in me having her day in, day out, be uncomfortable. And so right now we're trying to take things one day at a time. 
and move forward from there. So with that being said, um, I, I am processing. I'm still processing. Daddy's processing. Um, we are doing what we have to do for her. Um, she's, she's fine. She's, you know, she's, she's no different today than she was Tuesday morning when I woke her up for school and before I got the diagnosis. So, you know, we're not treating her different. We're just trying to make her as comfortable as possible while we transition into our new world. So, um, yeah, so that's where we're at, you know. Um, the troop leader, I think, is mad. <laughs> um, that's okay. And eventually, I will um, I will s sit down and have a conversation with the troop leader. And I still may not tell her about the diagnosis. Because um, I'm just going to come to her woman to woman, mother to mother. You know, and I, I'm going to like take the Girl Scout piece out of it and just have a conversation with her, um, you know, because she is, she's an ineffective leader. If you can't see what I saw and I'm on the outside looking in, literally there's a problem there, but you know, if other people like it, so be it, but that just, it wasn't for us. Um, so I do have a lot of training that I am doing now. Um, and it's all virtual, of course. I don't have to do much. But um, just to make sure that things transition smoothly. And I've been working with her already. I mean, we are setting up our schedule. We're going to, you know, it's still going to be business as usual when it comes to Girl Scouts. And I think that stems from the first troop because our first troop was very business oriented, savvy. I loved it outside of when the leadership changed. So it is what it is. You know, we'll meet once a month, have an activity once a month or something. And, you know, so we, I will say we will be seeing the troop <laughs> next month. Um, I think around the fifth, because we have a, actually a, supposed to be a troop outing. <laughs> How convenient. So we're all going to a, a play and now you know, my tickets have already been paid for. I paid for my tickets. I'm not letting my money go to waste, so we will see them. It's not a big deal, not a big problem. But at the same time, in between time, you know, it is what it is. And everything, you know, happens for a reason, you know. And as far as friendships come concerned, reason, season, lifetime. This season has changed. So it is what it is. But I did want to come to you all and let you know um, what we have been dealing with. I mean, we've been, you know, processing and dealing for a while, um, you know, really since September, since school started, but I just wasn't for sure what really was going on. And um, I'm glad everybody keeps saying, I can't believe you got, you know, things done so timely. Well, they don't know the boss lady. I mean, hello, you know, I get things done. So anyway, um, yeah, I was really, I was shocked. I mean, I got her into the doctor. Things just, how things progress, you know, and you know, we've been dealing with a lot. So I know you guys think that, oh, we're just dealing with one thing or this thing or that thing. No, it's been a lot of things. So, um, yeah, so that's where we are. That's what's going on. Um, I mean, really, there's nothing going on. I mean, she's the same, like I said, she's the same as she was the day she woke up and, you know, before I found out about the diagnosis. So, you know, um, we're just going to continue to move forward, you know, grade wise, she's doing well. Um, we're working on a few other things and we're just going to, you know, continue to live life. I mean, life doesn't stop, does it? So, um, I now have the moniker of, um, of, a mom of an autistic child, I guess. Um, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it, it is what it is. I, you know, there's multiple people who survive and who thrive and multimillionaires, you know what I mean? So I'm just going to make sure she has all the tools that she needs to thrive in this world. Because at the end of the day, she's number greatness. And I always tell her, you know, you're my quiet, 
quiet little ego, a quiet little storm, you know. So, hey, it's it's all good. Um, we love her more today than we did yesterday, and we're going to continue. So, that is my story time for the week. A um, little heavy, a little bit, but, um, you know, we good. We're good, we're good, we're good. So, just wanted to let you guys know. I know a few people have seen, like, on my Instagram um, you know, I post like a picture or two, you know, I really didn't say what the picture really truly meant, but, um, if you know, then you know, and if you don't, then you don't, uh, but now you know, okay. So, um, yeah, I am, I'm an advocate, 100% strong. So for all my, my ladies out there, my mothers out there, grandmothers, aunties, cousins who have a beautiful child who learns differently, who thinks differently, who acts differently, guess what? Me too. And uh, 100% strong, we're going to be all right, and they are too. So you guys be great. Be well. See you on a new video. Bye, guys.